Hello YouTube! In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the one-shot comic book, Batman Scarecrow 3D. A comic book that leaned very heavily on the 3D aspect of it. Just to give you a heads up, this storyline is more about Robin than it is Batman. And I would like to thank Mr. Rogues for essentially letting me know that this story even existed, as it was on his Five Overlooked Scarecrow Stories video. Links to all will be in the description, and now on to the review. The comic begins with two teenagers in a van making out, when suddenly the scarecrow opens their van and blasts them with fear toxin with the intent on stealing said van. As the teenagers are hallucinating and the scarecrow is stealing their van, he actually finds a flyer for Bliss, a new DJ who's performing in Gotham. Next day at Gotham Heights High School, Tim Drake is basically in class as he hears about what happened the following night. Suspicious, he spies on some of the teachers and when his suspicions are confirmed, he goes to the only man who he knows could help. Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman. Who already knows what happened and that the Scarecrow escaped. Bruce suggests to let him handle this, and for Tim to take the night off. Tim and his friends go to Bliss's big concert at some club, and as it turns out, he's using hallucinogenics similar to the Scarecrow's, but with the twist that they make you feel good. So he's kind of pumping these teenagers with anti-fear toxin. Having gotten bored, Tim pretty much suits up to meet Batman on the roof. And yeah, hallucinogens are still hallucinogens as Robin instantly jumps in really cocky. In fact, so cocky that one of the crooks that Batman had tracked down had a gun at Robin's head almost instantly. And swiftly knocks the batarang out of the goon's hand and knocks and knocks him out with one kick. Robin punches out one and then Batman instantly snaps at him telling him that he could have gotten himself killed. Batman instantly asks to scan one of Tim's shirts as soon as they get back to the cave. And yeah, as it turns out, the reason that Robin was so reckless was because of the hallucinogen that was pumped into him dur during Bliss's concert. Bruce tells Tim to handle Bliss and leave the Scarecrow to him. 
Speaking of which, the Scarecrow is paying Bliss and his employees a little visit. And as it turns out, Bliss's parents were part of some religious cult. And the Scarecrow is making the DJ experience the horrors of how his parents off themselves in a religious hellfire ceremony all over again. Which is almost like an ironic punishment. Bliss's intentions were good, but that didn't excuse what he did in drugging his audience. I mean, uh, man kind of brought this on himself the minute he brought drugs into his concert. And then the Scarecrow gives Bliss a lecture on how cruel the world is. Meanwhile, Robin spies on Bliss. Robin then checks in on Bliss's associates, to whom he finds in a vegetative state, and then calls an ambulance. Robin eventually finds Bliss on a guillotine to which he has to save him from. But, as he's doing that, the Scarecrow hits the Boy Wonder with some of his pan uh, well, his trademark fear toxin, forcing Tim Drake to hallucinate about, well, hallucinate about getting, well, that he's getting ripped apart by villains. He gets mocked by, well, Bat, well, he hallucinates that Batman should, should never have let him be his sidekick. Nightwing taunts him. He even gets taunted by Jason Todd who technically was alive, but they hadn't revealed it in-universe yet. Robin wakes up on a roller coaster and encounters who he thinks is the Scarecrow, but it turns out to be Bliss in the Scarecrow's outfit. So, anyways, Robin jumps in the Red Bird, which, is, which was his equivalent to the Batmobile. He calls Batman, but unfortunately, the Dark Knight is a little preoccupied dealing with an ex-cop turned suicide bomber. Across town, some of Tim Drake's friends are going to that club, the, the one that Bliss is performing at, and uh, Samantha talks to this one girl, saying that it's the 90s and she doesn't need a boyfriend to validate her life. Okay, um, this makes a few uh, modern things that just became apparent in Batman comics a little too, um, stupid, forced, and sounds like a brain, like the lady who was writing a portion of a recent issue of Batman's Secret Files had no clue what she was doing. Not only did Tim Drake date this girl, the one with the black hair, but uh, he's...
constantly portrayed as being in a relationship with uh, Stephanie Brown, a.k.a. Spoiler. I'm getting this odd feeling that he, Batman, Superman, or anyone else who was heterosexual in the DC universe, portrayed as heterosexual in the DC universe is not bisexual or gay. And I'm not attacking homosexuals or bisexuals. I'm just saying, fuck you, all you retards on social media who want to change the sexuality of established characters. And another thing, I remember the 90s. I actually remember tons of cartoon shows aimed at kids, actually, and potentially other shows that weren't sitcoms, actually promoting the nuclear family as being good and successful. They would not have the mindset of this bitch. The one who doesn't have the black hair. So anyways, Robin dashes to the club, but when he arrives at the meltdown, he finds that the door has been locked shut. The partygoers inside are chanting Bliss's name, but believe me, they are in for a rude awakening when they actually get the opposite of Bliss in this instance. As the Scarecrow is hijacked Bliss's concert, and... He intends to give the club-goers, well, a taste of his medicine. He's exposing them to their worst nightmares. He essentially swapped the canisters of the hallucinogens that Bliss uses with his patented fear toxin. Robin crashes in through the skyline, and a fight ensues. And as Robin had gained the upper hand, Scarecrow grabs a canister of Bliss's narcotics and intends to use it to ram Robin into a giant fan. But then Robin rams his bow staff into the fan's blade hard enough to not only stop it, but then he tackles Scarecrow, causing Scarecrow to drop the canister of Bliss's hallucinogen and says, behind that mask, you're a bitter little man who never got over the fact that your childhood wasn't perfect. And he kind of just summed up, uh, well, Crane's motivation in this comic. I mean, most of the time... The Scarecrow is obsessed with gassing Gotham City and scaring people for his deranged fear experiments. While here, his motivation is the fact that he's just uh, jealous of all these teenagers and folks in their 20s, because, well, they're having a good time when Crane was bullied when he was their age and never got to have a good time. I mean, you could say 
that the Scarecrow went after Bliss because he was pissed off that this guy essentially created the opposite of Scarecrow's fear toxin and used it to make people feel good as opposed to uh, scare them. But Robin's right. A, a huge reason as to why Scarecrow's doing this is because he's bitter about how horrid his teenage years were. Robin tackles Scarecrow to the ground, causing him to drop the canister of Bliss's hallucinogen, allowing the boy Wonder to pick it up as Scarecrow steals a gun off of someone, and as the Scarecrow is about to fire upon Robin, the Boy Wonder tosses the canister directly at Scarecrow, essentially causing it to explode when Scarecrow shot it. And yeah... Scarecrow, in a sense, gets a taste of his own medicine. Batman arrives as Scarecrow is completely loopy from the drugs that just got blasted in his face. He acknowledge he, he really likes seeing Batman in this drugged-up state. Tim meets up with his girlfriend, Ariana, after defeating the Scarecrow, who is back at Arkham Asylum, and the comic book ends with Scarecrow hallucinating that all of the therapists and... Guards at Arkham are versions of Robin. In all fairness, Batman vs. Scarecrow 3D is a really good comic. And I highly recommend it, and it does have a really good message about drugs. I mean... Regardless of intentions, you shouldn't use them. And in all fairness, Bliss actually has the potential to come back into comics as a... well, as a villain. I mean, this comic is technically canon due to the explanation we got from DC about who was retconned and who wasn't. So you can just say that Bliss traumatized from his encounter with the Scarecrow pretty much, well, that's all you need to say, motivational-wise, for him becoming a villain. I end this review by saying Batman Scarecrow 3D is an amazing read. Pick it up if you're able to find it online. And once again, I have to thank Mr. Rogues for essentially making his top five overlooked Scarecrow's Scarecrow Stories video, because this video is what let me know that this storyline even existed.